here. If you approach this book with nothing more than rudimentary high school biology, as I did, and 1970s high school biology at that, you are going to get beaten to your knees. Uh, apparently the science has progressed a bit since those good old frog dissecting days. There are whole chapters in which Mitch Rafelson and Kay Lang and Christopher Dickin blithely discuss things like introns and LPCs and endogenous retroviruses and phages and a whole bunch of other specific scientific terms and things that just went right over my head. Got spots before my eyes from the master's level textbook explanations of the human genome. Man, uh, don't go into this thinking this is a beach read. It's more like a defending your thesis kind of read. So what's this about? Mitch, an anthropologist, is in a menage a trois, tray, a threesome, with a Euro trash mountain climbing couple who have persuaded him, and you can imagine how they did, to go with them to a cave in the Alps that they discovered on a previous climb, which has ice three Ice Age dummies in it, two Neanderthals, and their baby, which is a Cro-Magnon. Wait, what? At the same time, Kay Lang, noted biochemist, who wrote what will turn out to be a predictive paper about evolutionary changes brought about through uh, ancient retroviruses, is shanghaied into examining a recently discovered UN atrocity site where hundreds of pregnant women were slaughtered and buried. At the same time, Christopher Dickens, a virus hunter for the CDC, is on the trail of a new disease called Herod's flu, which causes pregnant women to abort their horribly deformed fetuses and then become pregnant again without the benefit of sex. Shades of virgin birth. So what does this all have to do with each other? Well, Mitch, who is a discredited anthropologist because he returned some Indian bones to their original site, which I thought would make him a hero, or maybe he didn't return them, it's a little unclear, uh, realizes, as Kay realizes, as she examines the atrocity site, as Christopher realizes in the midst of his research that retroviruses are the means by which species evolve all of a sudden and in one generation. From Neanderthal to Cro-Magnon, from Cro-Magnon to super children. This is Darwin's radio, our genes signaling that it's time to move along the path to godhood. They are the only ones who realize it, and the world goes crazy with riots and social collapse and terrorist attacks because men carry the retrovirus and women don't want to get pregnant with uh, monster fetuses or fetuci or, you know, choose your word. So there's a worldwide cutoff of sex, which I guess is as good a reason as any to riot. Governments set up draconian measures, and it's all way too overblown and way too much overreaction. You know, governments overreacting to a virus? It's a bit too overwritten, in my humble opinion, too. The love triangle between Kay and Christopher and Mitch uh, is one of the most middle school, ham-handed treatments of a romance that you will ever read. Uh, that part, in my opinion, could have been underwritten. What is it with Mitch and threesomes? I don't know. But I do love Greg Bear. The guy is a sci-fi master, and I got him to autograph uh, my copies of uh, uh, Forge of God. Let's see, where is that? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, there it is right there. Let me move that properly. And he autographed my Anvil of Stars to... And even this uh, weird little book, 
uh, which is a bunch of short stories called Morisaki. And not only do I have Greg Bear's autograph in this, but I've got Nancy Cress's too. I am just the book maven, aren't I? But even the masters mess it up from time to time. Not that I consider this novel messed up. It's just hard to stay with. Old guy here. See you later.